Okay, cool. I was, um, I was sitting in a waiting room a couple of weeks ago uh, of one of what I think is one of Australia's most successful startup stories, uh, Boost Juice. And as I was sitting there waiting for uh, a meeting, I read this quote on the wall. And uh, it was quite a profound quote. It said, an idea isn't worth much. The value is found in its execution. I was kind of sitting there going, oh, it doesn't make you feel too good if you've got an idea that it's not worth much. <laughs> but it's a profound statement because so often we hero the idea, the idea's man, sorry women, uh, we hero this idea of um, it's all about the idea. Now the idea is definitely a starting point, but I believe that the, your success is not just found in, in a good idea, but it's in how you deliver it. And I remember when I was 19 years old, I was going into first year uni, and I kind of had a bit of a career plan worked out, uh, and it was in a totally different direction. Uh, and, and while I was at uni, I was doing some research online and found, uh, came across this fact that nearly 900 million people in our world don't have access to safe water. And I kind of was like, that's a huge fact. It didn't really move me because, I mean, we live in a country of 22 million, so it's kind of hard to consider 900. But as I uh, researched into the individual stories, that's what got me. See, the thing is, I've got twin sisters that are younger than me, and I'm, I'm watching stories of young people who spend their whole day walking to collect water for their family. I'm thinking, what do I do in my whole day? Think about what you do. And that's crazy enough, but then the water they bring home could end up killing um, their siblings or even themselves, and the facts say that 4,500 kids die every day from waterborne disease. And I'm sitting there in front of my computer, um, and this is not all men admit to crying, but I'm crying because I'm going to... Imagine if that was me. Watching my twin sisters die, that's, that's pretty bad. And then someone comes along and says, hey, you know why they die? Because the water you got them killed them. And how is it that, that thousands of young people go through this? And so I was feeling very uncomfortable and got together with a couple of friends and, and said, what if we could do something about this issue? And in my research on water online, I'd actually discovered that in Australia, we spend $600 million on bottled water, a product that I think and I reckon you think is absolutely ridiculous and stupid. I'm from a water company. Um, <laughs> so, so it's a ridiculous product, and we're all like, yeah, stupid bottled water, but we buy it on a hot day because we don't have our tap next to us, and we're thirsty. We don't want a drink full of sugar. We pay 2 or $3. We slap ourselves in the face, and we've all contributed to the $600 million bottled water industry. So our idea was, well, let's get as much money from that as we can, and we launched what's called a social enterprise, which is a business that exists all for a cause. And we want to empower you to be able to simply make a switch in the fridge. And by doing that, you're part of funding water projects to people who really need it. And so that was the kind of the idea, and uh, we called it uh, Thank You Water. And um, the Twitter handle might be at Thank You Oz, but I didn't say that. And so Thank You Water, right? I'm not, we're not looking for more Twitter followers. Please do not follow us. Um, so the, the idea was simple. And then one of the guys in the first meeting said, oh, this is awesome. How do you start a bottled water company? We're like, oh, not sure. <laughs> so we, we Googled it, uh, and heaps of results came up. Um, no, but <laughs> seriously. And, and uh, apart from Googling, I was doing a uni assignment. At the time, you had to research how a company started up from the ground up. So I called a bottled water company, got onto the guy who started it, and I didn't lie. I said, I'm doing a uni assignment. I need to know how you started your bottled water company. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> and so you told me everything, which was so good um, <laughs> for the assignment. And, 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 and we kept a few notes on the side. Now, this was a scary fact. He talked about having hundreds of thousands of dollars in startup capital and to a team that had a combined net worth of about a grand, which is that term rich people use, we were like, this is silly. What are we doing? Uh, but we got a bit of boldness. We put our parents' suits on so we didn't look too young. And we started booking meetings with these bottling plants. And I remember uh, we, we'd take the pea plates down as we drove in the car park. Uh, you know, we, we didn't want to look too young. And we, we'd nod and smile. And believe me, that gets you a lot further than you think it will. And so nodding and smiling in these meetings and talking to these guys, we, we found out that we're, we're literally up for at least 250 grand. And through a series of events, uh, we ended up getting one factory who was just blown away with the idea. They said, we're going to back you, um, no upfront costs. And then we got Vizzy on board who donated uh, 30,000 bottles as a one-off donation. And they were able to put some other support behind the idea. And then we, we pitched. 
And I never forget the first meeting because it was a 10 minute presentation with an A3 poster, a friend did up on the computer. And we're holding it and we're waving our hands about changing the world. And we had this bold line. We said, You have an opportunity, and this is to the largest private distributor of beverages in the country. You have an opportunity to be a part of something that's going to change the world forever or sit by and watch someone else. Probably your competitor be part of this. And, uh, <laughs> and that 10 minute pitch turned into an hour long. And he placed his first order for 50,000 bottles. That was amazing, also because we hadn't registered, trademarked, or done really anything, because <laughs> we, we thought, we'll just pitch, we'll get some experience, and then we'll see what happens. Uh, we didn't think we'd land an order. I sat down with a business mentor. He said, Dan, how's the water idea going? I said, brilliant, factory, busy, 50,000 bottle order. He said, how are you doing this? Where's all your money coming from? I said, we don't have any. <laughs> He said, you'd have to. I said, I'm glad you brought that up. And, and, and he ended up donating $20,000 because he was so inspired and that helped get the idea off the ground. And we had a pallet uh, from the first order delivered to my parents' house and that was a great day until the whole team went dead, dead quiet. Because a third of all the product in every box, the label was scrunched onto the point you couldn't even read it. At that moment, we actually had to do our first national product recall, calling up the, the largest distributor that just backed our idea. They'd sent product into stores. They had to pull it back. That ends brands once they're established. We hadn't even begun. We kind of were like, this is awkward, but we got back on the horse. We sorted out the product. And over the next six months, we built up to 350 stockers. It was a lot harder than we thought. We'd pitch the idea and you know, not, people didn't quite understand it and, and not as many people got behind it as we thought. But six months into selling, actually a year into the journey, our first factory who promised the world couldn't deliver. And over five weeks, they didn't supply us with any product. We ended up losing 300 of those 350 customers. We lost distributors. The whole thing nearly came crashing down. We decided, let's relaunch. We relaunched with a new distributor. These guys were massive. Everything was going to be so good. We sent them a truckload of water. Then they went into liquidation. What does that mean? Turns out it means you don't really get your money back now or maybe for a very long time. To us, it was like, hang on a second, this is a good idea, this is just about helping people, why is this so hard? And what kept us going through that little moment was two medium-sized retailers, they kind of liked the idea, and we went back and forward, then they both said no. That was discouraging, but probably more discouraging when they both came out with their own concept, uh, their, own, their own bottle of water that went to funding wells and water projects. And it was discouraging, but it, we were happy about the cause, but it felt like we've been in this nearly two years and it's not really getting traction. One of the biggest supermarkets, after a year of working with them, said, congratulations, you're in national range. Best day ever at the two-year mark. We celebrated a few weeks later. We called up to see where the first order was. They said, oh, a new, a new category manager's taken over. We've got the big brands, we've got our own brand, we don't need your whatever water. We said we had a commitment. They said, you do, but it doesn't stand anymore. It was an old commitment at the two-year mark. I remember hanging up the phone and crying, going, this is, this, is, this is crazy. We had story after story. I don't even have time to tell you how many people just, just shut the idea down or, or said to us, oh, yeah, if you had a $3 million ad campaign, then we'd be interested in, in putting your product on shelf, thinking, where would we get $3 million from? And even if we did, we wouldn't put it onto billboards. We'd fund projects. And it was this, this whole moment of we have this idea and we know it could, should change the world, but people aren't catching it. So we changed our delivery. And uh, this is a shot just of the first 50,000 bottles. I kind of forgot to put that up, um, one of the team with it. Um, but we changed our delivery and we launched a video on Facebook that said two weeks from today, we're presenting to 7-Eleven Australia. And we're asking you, to upload a video or a post onto their Facebook wall to say, 7-Eleven, if you stock thank you water, I'd buy it. Now, it was a little bit cheeky because we hadn't told them about it, we just booked a meeting. <laughs> and, um, and, and that morning we launched it, it had over 400 posts on their Facebook wall. Uh, it took off, the project covered it that night, and then more and more media got behind it. And I want to give you a quick taste of what happened. Okay, let's get down to business. Hey guys, Jules Lund here from Getaway. Hi, I'm Patricia Sankyagra. Hi, my name is Mike. I'm Kat. I'm Paul. Hey guys, I'm John here. My name is Lizzie. This is Mike. Zay Andrew. Vita Adam here. My name is Rich. My name is Louis. I'm Dean Gaia. Christopher Wayne. My name is Rudy. Gerard. Joanna. Salou. Tia. Teresa. Kate. Baby. Ross. Daniel. That's Craig and the whole holiday. Thank you, water. I love thank you water. Where's your thank you water? We love thank you water. 7-Eleven, please stop thank you water. 7-Eleven, stop thank you water. I'll get daddy to buy it. Thank you water, thank you water. If you stocked it, I would buy it. I would definitely buy it. 
I'd buy it. I would buy it. I would definitely buy them. Everybody look to the left. Everybody look to the right. Can you see a little pay for it tonight? 7-Eleven, thank you. 7-Eleven, so let's go. I would buy it. buy it. We will buy it. We want to keep the humanities on the right track. 7-Eleven, we can take it on the cold track. 7-Eleven, stop. Thank you, water. I wouldn't buy it like every day. We will buy it. So the world would be a better place. I'd buy it. 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 Putting money into water. For those who need it the most. The media got behind this campaign. It was just popping up everywhere. We go into this meeting, and 7-Eleven loved it. They said, this is amazing. You know, we can be part of change in the world. It's obviously going to sell. People want it. Media are behind it. And it was like for the first time in nearly three years, someone caught what we were trying to tell them day one. Just because we, we, we kept the same idea. We just changed the way that we delivered it. They did the fastest new product rollout to market uh, launch they've ever done, and that was really cool. We went on to outsell uh, Evian, then Evian and Courage. As an organization, at three years, we'd help 5,000 people get access to safe water. And over the next two years, we built up to 3,000 stockers around the country and helped 56,000 people get access to safe water across nine countries. And, and so that's where we were at, two years. Now, during those two years, we were working on something else, something that no one saw coming and something that we re really believed in. Because when we went over and saw these water projects, it was amazing. It was like, yeah, water is life-changing, but it wasn't everything. There were other issues around food and nutrition and health and hygiene. And we thought, how incredible would it be if Australians could be, could be far... No, wow, part. <laughs> Let's delete whatever that, whatever came out. <laughs> how good would it be if Australians could be part of the solution? And so we came up with this idea based around live every day, give every day, a product range. And we got on board this guy, Callum Hand from MasterChef, and uh, he joined our team as our CTO, Chief Taste Officer. Very cool title, but more than a cool title, he developed uh, with some of the top suppliers in the country uh, a range of muesli, oats, quick oats and muesli bars. And, and we wanted to, to create something that, number one, was as good if not better than competitors, but number two, by buying it, you're changing the world. And in every pack that you purchase provides a week's worth of food to someone in need, plus funds a long-term sustainable solution. We also developed a, a body care range, hand wash, hand lotion and sanitizer, all natural base, all natural product, and worked with some of the top chemists across the country to develop it. And while we were doing that, we developed this. It's called Track Your Impact. There's nothing like it on the market, but every single box, every packet has its own unique tracker code. You type that into the website or the phone app, and you'll see the exact GPS coordinates of the project that that packet's funding. You have your own profile, and with that profile, you can see all the projects that you're funding over time, and then six to 12 months later, once the project's complete, We'll email you a field report with photo proof of the well or the filter or whatever program we told you years earlier that you were part of funding. And so we developed... Uh, thank you. We, we developed this and, and we were so pumped. And that five-year mark was about two months ago in July. And so the thank you water was growing. We'd worked so hard. And everyone said to us, you guys are crazy. Because, see, for five years, we'd failed to get one bottle onto either of the supermarket shelves. And we needed the entire range to be part of, you know, either with Coles or Woolies or both of them. Because without them, they have 75% of the Australian grocery market. So this range just wouldn't work. And people said, you know, like, you guys, like, you've wasted your time. What are you doing? But we felt we had an idea. We felt we had a way to deliver it that no one had ever done it before. And so on the 17th of July, we launched the Coles and Woolworths campaign. <laughs> and it started with this video filmed in a warehouse uh, in one take for six and a half minutes. It was someone else's idea, not mine. Uh, I had to do the talking, but our team presented the new range. Uh, and then we said, two weeks from today, we've booked a meeting with Coles and with Woolworths. <laughs> but we don't want to go in alone. We want you to come with us. So we're asking you to upload a post or a video onto their Facebook wall. Again, no communication with them apart from booking the meeting. 
And uh, yeah, it went crazy. So the video had 75,000 views in two weeks. Now, our goal was 10,000 in two weeks because our best video had had 10,000 views in a year. So we thought in two weeks that'd be awesome. It got that on day one and it just went crazy. We had 15 different celebrities upload a video of themselves and spread that to their networks. Uh, 81 media features. And everyone's like saying, uh, you guys are crazy. What are you doing taking on Coles and Woolworths? And we knew we were just trying to deliver this concept in a way that that did it justice. And the campaign had a reach of 15.5 million social media and mainstream media impressions. And then we may have flown two 10,000 square foot signs, one in Melbourne, one in Sydney, (laughs) up the freeway during peak hour, and then around the head offices. So this one was, hey, Coles. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) It it, it said, thank you for changing the world in brackets if you say yes, because we hadn't met yet. Uh, And that's... (laughs) That's it, going around the head office for about uh, 20 minutes or so. Um, and, and then we did Woolworths up in, uh, up in Sydney, um, you know, and uh, that, was, that was interesting. So the whole stunt was, was donated by the helicopter company. They couldn't believe we're doing it, and they said, we're in. So they donated their time. And, and then a private donor paid for the cost of it, and the campaign was incredible. And then it came to the meeting, and I was nervous. We were all pretty nervous because this was big, like, probably bigger than we thought it would be. Uh, The videos were so creative, everyone went mental. And when we walked in, I'll never forget one of the lines in the meeting. They said, you know what? You did what it took to stand out in a crowded market. And see, there are so many ideas out there, and we've all got this great idea, but it's about standing out. It's about delivering it in a way that does the idea justice. Coles, five hours after that meeting. like We thought we got a few weeks to wait um, till we hear back. Five hours later, they called us, said we're taking the range nationally. We met with Woolworths uh, two days later, and two and a half hours after that meeting, they called to say, we'll be taking the range nationally. And you can walk today, it's just starting to roll out in Coles and Woolies. By the end of October, all the products will be there. And the craziest thought is this. You know, at the five-year mark, which is back in July, we'd help 56,000 people get access to water. But now this is just the beginning. And we can see something huge. Hopefully hundreds, you know, tens of thousands, then one day hundreds, and one day millions of people getting access to not just food, but water, health, and hygiene. And I've shared with you kind of our journey and a little bit of our story. And I started with that quote saying that an idea isn't worth much. It's the execution that holds the value. And you might be sitting there saying, well, that's nice. You gave us a quote. You told us a cool story. But what's my takeaway? And look, we don't know everything about executing an idea. But we've learned a couple of things. And I just want to share a few of them with you. And the first is to build a great dream, it takes a great team. You know, I'm the lucky guy that gets to come and tell you today, and uh, you guys are laughing and making me feel good, that's nice, but there's a whole team who made this happen, and they're incredible, and without them, this wouldn't be here, I wouldn't be here, and thank you wouldn't be what it is today. The second thought is persistence, and our journey is persistence, going again and again and again. And I want to end with this thought, and it's, it's this thought on excuses, and you know what, I'm good at them, and a lot of people are, but could you put up your hand if you're older than 12 years old? Awesome. There's a few of you in the room. That is really cool. So the reason I asked you this question is because we cannot afford to make excuses. And my little cousin, Ben, when he was 12, said to his mom, I want to sponsor a child. She said, good for you, Ben. You have to come up with the money yourself. And Ben said, mom, I don't even get pocket money. So Ben had an idea and he had a problem. And how is he? And he had an excuse that was fair enough. He's like 12. Just, you know, relax, Ben. You don't have to change the world that young. But he started a dog walking business to raise money to sponsor children. Now, he started walking up to 20 dogs a week. He didn't just sponsor one. He sponsored four children. In school holidays, he'd pay his friends 20 bucks an hour, still make $10 an hour off them to go walk dogs. It was unbelievable. <laughs> right, Ben, Ben, Ben. Just let me finish before you clap because Ben's fully funded a well in India for a whole community to get access to safe water. And Ben's finished funding a microfinance program uh, for 10 women to start their own business in sewing. And it's just like, what the heck? (laughs) He's making everyone in this room look bad. (laughs) And, And I love it because it's so inspiring to see that there's an example of not just having an idea and, and executing it well, but not letting excuses stop you. So thank you for your time.
Thank you.